everyone, this is Miss Curtis and I'm going to read a story today which is called Jamie O'Rourke and the Big Potato. It's an Irish folk tale and it, the genre is fantasy and it is retold and illustrated by Tommy DiPaola. And this story has been passed on and so that's why it's a retold story. It's not his original story. So before we actually read the story, I wanted to go over a few of the vocabulary words that you might notice that we haven't seen before. So I wrote them down here and we'll go over them real quickly and then I'm gonna read the story to you. The first new word I wanna to explain to you is praddies. And praddies is the Irish, British, and Scottish word for potato. So you'll see that in this book a lot. And then the next word I want you to notice is puny. It's spelled P-U-N-Y, and it means small and weak. The next word is scampered, and that means to run with quick, light steps. Sometimes you'll see animals running like that, like a little squirrel will scamper up a tree. The next word is pondering, and that means to think, thinking about something very carefully, taking your time, not rushing. And then the last word I want you to notice is constable. And that's a police officer. And typically they are from Britain, Ireland, and Scotland. Um, that's what they call their police officers. So I'm gonna go ahead and start reading this book. And I hope you enjoy it. Okay, here we go. Jamie O'Rourke was the laziest man in all of Ireland. He would do anything to avoid working, especially if it had anything to do with growing potatoes. Like even the kitty and the puppy are taking a nap with him. Jamie O'Rourke, his wife Eileen would say, we'll have nothing to eat this winter if you don't go out and dig up the praddies. Oh, the saints preserve us, Jamie would whine. Me back's as sore as it can be. Sure as I'm telling you, wife, you'll have to dig them up yourself. I'll break in two if I so much as get up out of this bed. So Eileen, who had done all the planting and watering and weeding anyhow, would go into the tiny garden to dig up the smallest potatoes in Ireland all because Jamie was too lazy to dig a larger garden and had no money to buy good potato seed. Then poor Eileen wrenched her back and was laid up in bed. St. Bridget and Virgin Mary herself must have smiled on Eileen O'Rourke, the village women said. Why, it's the first rest she's had since she married Jamie O'Rourke. With Eileen in bed, Jamie began to worry. No Eileen to dig meant no praddies all winter, and no praddies meant no food. Oh, poor me, wailed Jamie, I'll starve to death. I'd best go to the church and confess to Father O'Malley. There's no telling how soon old death will be knocking on me door. So even though it was midnight, Jamie set out for the church. He was about halfway down the hill when he heard singing and a tap, tap, tapping sound. Sure, and I wouldn't be knowing, Jamie whispered, but I swear it's a leprechaun. And sure enough, sitting in a circle of ferns in the moonlight was a leprechaun singing and hammering tiny nails into the heels of the fairy boots he was making. Jamie knew just what to do. He crept up and grabbed the little man by the coattails and held him. Let me go, let me go, the leprechaun shouted. Not on your life, Jamie said. Not until you show me where you keep your pot of gold. Now everyone in Ireland knows that leprechauns make boots and dancing shoes for the fairies who pay for them with gold. And everyone knows that if you catch a leprechaun, 
He'll pay for his freedom with his pot of gold. But this leprechaun was cleverer than most. Oh, please, Mr. Mortal Man, he pleaded. I'm just starting out making fairy shoes, and I only have one or two pieces of gold in, the, in my pot. Won't you take a wish instead? Why, what would I wish for, Jamie asked. Me, who's about to die of starvation because my wife is sick in bed and can't dig up the praties for winter. And they're such puny praties anyhow. Well, said the leprechaun, reaching into his pocket, you could wish for the biggest praddy in the world. It would last all winter, and you wouldn't have to do anything more than plant the seed, water it, and wait. That sounded wonderful to Jamie. Done, he shouted. And as the leprechaun dropped the seed into Jamie's hand, Jamie let go of his coattails and the leprechaun and off that leprechaun scampered. When Eileen heard what he had done, she was furious. Jamie O'Rourke, you're not only the laziest man in Ireland, but a fool as well. Give up a pot of gold for a pratty seed? Well, I'm going to plant this seed and water it and you'll see, Jamie said, and out he went. I wonder if it's going to work. And Faith, Eileen did see. In no time at all, the biggest, finest potato plant had sprouted out of the ground, followed by the potato itself. It was so big, it pushed up not only all the dirt in the garden, but the garden shed and the corner of the cottage as well. Well, surely now it's ready to dig, Jamie said proudly. Check out this potato, guys. Even the house is being pushed up. He hoed all around it, but he couldn't dig up that prouty out of the ground. He got a beam and a rock and tried to pry it out. He pushed and he pushed, but it wouldn't budge. As he was pondering what to do, his neighbor passed by on his way to the village. He couldn't believe his eyes. He couldn't wait to tell everyone in the village what he had seen. And before you knew it, the hill up to Jamie's was filled with villagers coming to see the big potato. Where did it come from, they asked. Jamie told them about the lucky night he had caught the leprechaun and how smart he had been. Why anyone could have a pot of gold, he bragged. But the biggest pratty in the world? Well, that took some doing. However, did you outsmart a leprechaun, they all asked at once. Jamie hesitated and scratched his head. We'll help you dig up your pratty, Jamie, if you'll tell us how you did it. And they grabbed shovels and hoes and started to dig. They dug and they dug and they pushed and they shoved until the potato flew up out of its hole. It rolled down the hill faster and faster until it reached the bottom where it bounced up high and came to a stop, wedged between the two stone walls on either side of the road. What to do now? Uh-oh, now the road is blocked. That pretty is so big that no one, no cart, nothing can get by it, the constable complained to Father O'Malley. How's a body to get in or out of the village? What shall we do, the villagers wailed. I wonder what they're going to do. They all looked at Jamie and said, it's your pretty. You'll have to move it out of our way. Well, Eileen spoke up. There's more than enough pratty for everyone. Why don't you all take some? What a good idea. So the villagers sawed and chopped and carted off huge pieces of potato while Jamie sat on the stone wall and watched. There he is sitting on the wall. 
with his puppy and kitty. All winter long, everyone had potatoes to eat and eat and eat until no one wanted to see or hear of potato again. They start off smiling <laughs> and then they're really tired of potatoes. In the spring, Jamie said, I saved a potato eye for a seed and it's just, a, it's just about time to plant it. Oh no, the villagers all cried. If you promise not to plant it, Jamie, we'll promise before St. Patrick and all the saints to see that you and Eileen always have plenty to cook and eat. We don't want another giant pratty around here. Jamie smiled and agreed. What a perfect life for a lazy man. And so, you see, darling Eileen, Jamie told her, I wasn't such a fool with that leprechaun after all. And Eileen had to admit that Jamie O'Rourke was right. They had all the food that they needed, brought by all the villagers. And there's the happy leprechaun. So the next thing I want to talk to you about is they mentioned St. Patrick in the story. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about St. Patrick because he was a real person. He was born in Britain or maybe Scotland, they're not really sure, around 400 AD to wealthy parents who were Christians. He was then kidnapped when he was 16 years old and taken to Ireland where he became a slave for six years. He learned to speak Gaelic, which is the Irish language. And he also became really strong in his faith as a Christian at that point because he just needed to turn to somebody and he was in a really difficult situation. So his faith grew, even though his life was really hard. So after six years, he was able to escape and he went and became a priest. He was given the Latin name Patrius, meaning father of his people. He decided that God was calling him to go back to Ireland to teach Christianity. And another really cool thing that he showed people using the shamrock, because we think of the shamrock when we think of St. Patrick's Day, is he talked about the Trinity. So he showed that this shamrock has three leaves and there's only one stem. And he compared that to three beings who make up one divine God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. So it was really cool, a really cool way for him to show people the Trinity. So I just thought I would share that with you. And I hope you really enjoyed the story of Jamie O'Rourke and the giant potato or the big potato. Um, I really enjoyed reading it to you. And I'm really proud of all the hard work that you guys are doing at home. Great job, guys. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.